阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you for our、uh, sessions in to attending our Thai youth groups Thai Shang Gan Ying Pian Treaties on Response and Retribution session. Uh, today we'll continue with the part two transgression easily committed by people with authority. This is a very long, ongoing series.、Um, we won't rush it. We'll take our time to savor every single clause of it. It's very precious for our conducts. And this one, if you go up the level, it's a part of the crimes and offenses. Just for recap, and it's the book. So what we do today is we're continuing from last week. Last week we focused only on gratitudes and grievances, and we already take like whole session for that,、uh, which is very important.、Uh, foundation as being a human is to be grateful for those who have shown kindness and to let go if you can,、uh, or with time let go of any grievances.、Uh, it's best not to harbor any of this.、Uh, If you can let it go as soon as possible, let it go as soon as possible. Now we will move on to today's topic: to treat the common people with disdain and haughty ignorant arrogance. Qing Miao Tian Ming. All right. So in in English, it makes it much more clear in the in the sense. But Qing Miao in Chinese is means、uh, people who、um, become, you know, <clears throat> a official, a government official, people who were elected or you know. Gain the power, seize the power, whatever it means. They got becoming the leader of the people, and they treat people with disdain and haughty arrogance. That attitude is、um, one of I'm holier than thou or higher than thou. So that attitude,、uh, as a person who I, you know, how to say, no matter what ways, if we become a leaders of an organization or a nation or a group. Your job is to, you know, pre- protect and serve. You know, sounds like New York <laughs> Police Department, <laughs> NYPD, protect and serve. So basically, you know, job is to protect and serve、uh, to the best of your abilities and within your、um, mandate. So there's a very good saying from、uh, Tang Taizong, you know, the one of the best emperor of China in Tang Dynasty. You know, he. Always sees the glow. How to say the、um, golden age of Chinese civilization, and、uh, under unified administration. So he said that, and the reason why he can make it happen is because of his ideal ideal. So what is his idea that you know educates and informs his governance? First thing he say, people is the root of a nation. Moral is the root of a human. A person who has a deep Cultivation,、uh, deep morals.、Uh, how does it help a person who has a strong moral?、Uh, if they have strong morals, they will always、uh, left a lasting impression on to others.、Uh, and if people can live、uh, without worries on food,、uh, shelters, so live in peace, live in、uh, content. Uh, without worries about their securities and their、uh, whereabouts, you know, no unemployment, then the country will naturally be strong and stable. So, as a leader, or、uh, in ancient times, as king, still apply for some country, but most of us presidents, as a leader of a nation, of a leader of an organization, if we operate based on a morals of compassion. Morals of、um, kindness, of、um, consideration towards others, then naturally the people's heart, people's hearts and minds will be naturally will be directed towards you. 
if you rule with benevolence, yes, that's the key, that's the term, benevolence, uh, the heart will naturally be won by you, just by itself. Just like every children uh, naturally will feel close and trusting towards their parents who give birth to them. If we observe the histories from the you know yesteryears, ancient times until now, um, those great kings, sage kings or queens, um, those great leaders who were well loved, they always uh, have that you know um, love in their heart towards the people they govern over. They always operate on that principle. Uh, always try to operate based on that understanding, you know, love for the people. That means you care for their um, livelihood, make sure they can live well, just like parents care for their children. And their attitude is always towards the people is always, you know, um, like their own children. So my people is my, my own children. And obviously, every parent's normal ones that usually love their uh, love their own children and they will give everything they have to their own children so a proper leader should be like that and not just a leader or a, a, a prime minister or king or president but every layers in the chain of command they should have the same ideology same how is it same attitude same decency uh, same morals on this regard uh, so this is something that needs to be experienced and practiced and actually um, see it for yourself. You know, a person who really cares about his juristic, his constituents, who really wants to work to better their communities, who naturally shows that. Uh, we'll start from the ancient times stories and then to the recent one. And uh, like I say, today is, this time is just perfect to talk about this. So this is... This clause says what is not good, what does not make a good leader. You know, this is not a good leader. And um, in the history, there is a person from Song Dynasty goes by Zheng Qingchen. It's just Mr. Zheng. He's very, um, how to say, very uh, ungrateful. Every time when he became a uh, magistrate of a province, he always, you know, mistreat and mistreat the people over there. Because back then, you become a magistrate, you literally become a little king in the area. We in Chinese, we call Chu Huangdi, uh, a person who become a king in a little local locale um, because it's outside. Tian Gao Huangdi, the, the, the center of power, right? So you, you um, hide in that one corner, you become a king, basically. Everyone's serving you. Um, so it's very dangerous if you have a mindset of, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm holy than thou, something like that, or you know, you should, I'm your lord. <laughs> that kind of ma ma mentality. Uh, lording over people. So, um, yeah, this person is really terrible. So, what happened is, because he's in power, he represents the authority. Obviously, no one can touch him. When he um, finished his terms, there are terms, okay? He finished his terms, stepped down. <laughs> um, how do I say? And the whole people, like the, the people of that province, line up, blocking his path and spit on him one by one. It's like a run, running the gauntlet where he, he, he went, everywhere he went, the, the spit follows him. So this, is, this shows how much hate he has garnered, uh, you know, deservingly by his mistreatment of the people, karma. Um, so this guy, Mr. Zheng, you know what he did? He did not reflect. He say, oh, how dare you? So he has that lordy attitude, lordy. And, and he say, how dare you insult Cao Ting Bing Guan? Uh, how dare you insult a governor, uh, his majesty's uh, 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 governor? So what he did, uh, he write, you know, the name of every single people in the province who spit on him and report back to the emperor, uh, report back to the central government. Uh, so... <laughs> This emperor is very smart, obviously. He's very uh, still, still awake. He's not, he's not um, senile. <laughs> so what he say is, this emperor replies, as a leader of a government, as a person, as a leadership, as a leader, the person 
the most important aspect of governance is to win over hearts and minds of the people that you govern over. If people uh, attitude, uh, response feedback towards your governance is with speed and hatred, like they dislike your governance so much that they're willing to do, you know, to uh, willing to sacrifice even their life to go against you. Um, then I can say without doubt your doings in that province, uh, you know, is obviously terrible. You're obviously a terrible leader, unfit to rule, unfit to govern. Um, hence, I don't even need to ask anyone else. This just by the response, it's clear. So how dare you complain to me uh, uh, using these kind of uh, matters to complain to me? You have a face to complain to me. Um, how big is your goal? You know, how big? I mean, how gutsy are you? So immediately he got uh, punished by uh, reducing his um, rankings. So he stripped of his ranks. So that's it. This is this is quite a good good uh, like how to say a good king. So who's who's still aware of what's happening? Some. So we we'll move on to another story. Mister uh, Tang, during the Tang Dynasty, that was before the Song, one of the um, natural disasters that one we have in Australia, bushfires and all that. Um, because of the um, autumn, uh, there is a lot of um, hay, uh, not haze, hail, and the um, icing on the surface of the land hence the crops were harmed they can't grow anything back then there's no system of economy we have right now it's you don't get anything you don't have anything growing out of that land patch of land use you're going to get stuff if you have no savings and most people doesn't cannot account for savings they just got enough to pay the tax in their own stomachs so obviously as a king, the job is to take care of the people, you know, always care for them. And he immediately, immediately um, ordered every governor of that province, of every province to report um, the damage, give us a damage assessment. How much, um, how do I say, how much food does the people need because they lost their crops to the weather, the terrible weather. However, there's one governor from one of the China provinces report back to the to the central government say, my province, you know, the crops does not have any harm from this weather. So my crops are fine. Uh, the, crop, the people's crops are fine. However, because everywhere else were reporting the uh, damage you know, done by the weather towards the crops and hence the people cannot eat, but this guy says no. This is the only guy who says that there's no problem. Everyone else is reporting as is, like this is the actual damage. Uh, we actually have a reduced uh, harvest, stuff like that. And then you alone says no, it's fine, it's a okay. Obviously, he's uh, obviously it's it's, it's um you know uh, how to say it warrants investigations. Is that guy uh, reporting as is as it is? Um, so, emperors uh, sending his own emissary to check, his own investigation officers to check on the uh, ground, go to the field and have a field trip and check. The truth is, the damage is even worse than everywhere else. Um, about 3,000 hectare, I don't know what hectare, English hectare or Chinese hectare. So, 3,000 hectare uh, worth of uh, damage. So the emperor, when he heard this report, he's um, sighing, says, you know, as a governor of a province, you are a parent. You are akin to the parents of these provinces. Uh, uh, even though there is no harm that befalls upon your people in the province, you should also, you should say there is harm to the province of this uh, place that you govern so that you actually can help, you know, to give more benefits to your people. So how can you be so uh, how does it grow? Uh, how does it? How can you be so cold towards the people that you govern over? Hence, the emperor has um, set a sentence on this 
uh, province, uh, this governor who lied to him uh, by, you know, sentenced by exile, exile him to a place far, far, far away from the center. So basically what he meant is, you know, even though uh, your, your job is to try to gain a uh, benefit to your people, to the people that you govern over, to the people you have jurisdiction uh, in charge of your care, basically. Um, your job is to uh, find uh, the benefits to help them, uh, to benefit them. And you, on the other hand, do not even ask for help, even that when help was offered. That is not right. right? Basically, is what he means. So, because emperors, they always have tax. Where did the tax go? The tax goes to the government, right? The government, in form of rice and all that, they all store it in the, in their imperial. I mean, in their govern, uh, government granaries. So when these things happen, this grain should be released to the people, just like what we have right now. We pay tax every day, all right, to a uh, to the coffers of the treasuries. So the government's job is to ensure that every people was adequately compensated or at least able to get by when disaster happens, including COVID and all that, those packages. So, yeah, these are the common sense. And, you know, as a people, the right way of doing it is you should try to find ways to help the people you have, you know, fight for their, on their behalf. That's why they elect you. So back to this, uh, that's the first part. So do not treat people with arrogance and disdain. Treat them like your children. Well, treat them like your, as if you, you have your own children, something like that. And now next part, to destabilize the country or pass whimsical and burdensome regulations and laws. Lao Ran Guo Zhen. That's right. Change. What do you guys think? Is change good? Is change uh, good? Because if we want to bring a different angle to this, when does change require it? And when does change become element of destabilization? The answer is in, the, in, in here. The English gave the answer. The Chinese just say Lao Ran Guo Zhen to destabilize the countries and its regulations. Whimsical and burdensome regulation. Right, whimsical and burdensome. Something that is not does not touch the actual heart of the matter. Why do okay, another question. Why do people want to pass whimsical and burdensome regulations and laws? Do you guys know the reasoning behind it? Anyone? I want to make this more interactive, this answer? Yes, they pass some laws that you know says this is a project, infrastructure project. It costs twenty millions. And then they report it as 100 million. Where did the 80 million go? There you go. That's one of the examples. Straight or hate. So this is happened. Yeah, this happens. Yeah. Why am I laughing? Because that's the only thing you can do in the face of that. Um, yeah. Destabilize the country or pass whimsical burdens and regulation laws. And the person who of that you know with 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 low moral with no bottom line becoming a governor becoming a politicians and that's why we okay we, we have a phrase politicians you know when we say that it's a negative connotation why that's it doesn't happen without reason there's no wave without wind Wu Feng Bu Qi Lang we got my direct translation so this thing is what happens since ancient times until now. Um, a country who is destabilized means the interest group and all that is break, broken up. Everyone is, everyone is not united. Everyone has a conflicting interest fighting against one another. They are not um, looking above that and trying to achieve a common denominator to achieve a certain uh, ground they, they can agree on. Because otherwise, why would you be a country? We bring it down to a notch, like a marriage. What's the point of having a marriage? right? If you and that person is at odds all the time, what's the point of having a marriage? Right? The whole point of marriage doesn't mean that you have to think exactly the same as me. No, you will be different because of your conditions, of your growth, of your background, because it's easier to relate to us. right? If you just keep saying that nation state, we will be like, this is not political science. So basically, like a marriage, right? Like 
obviously you have a different background. You grow up in a different, you know, environment, kind of education, mindset. Now, what brings two person together other than the love is also able wanting to build a future together. Love is also important. So does a nation. A love for this land, a love for these uh, countries that, you know, give you the resources or anything you need to grow yourself and your family and ancestors, you know, that histories, the cultures. That thing is what needs to be emphasized more instead of the time-to-time, day-to-day topics that are divisive. We are not saying that we cover it, but we should always have a common ground. I'm, I'm talking about the destabilized factors. All right. I hope this cuts to the roots of it. You know, what makes this country a country? Otherwise, it won't be a country. Right. Geographical reason. It makes a country. You are stuck in the same little patch of land. You either work together or keep fighting war for another 300 years, which is what happened in Europe. It took so much war to get them together. In China too, you know, what long united must divide, long divided must unite. So same thing. So to make things destabilize is to create suffering and misery. It might not be war. It might be, you know, livelihood affected, unemployment, a government shutdown. Closing of Congress, closing of day-to-day operations unnecessarily. Whimsical, burdensome regulation and law. Let's look at the example. A country must always uh, strive to, you know, cultivate. Um, you must always strive to stabilize, strive for stability, strive for peace. Um, and a person with merits, born in a country with merits, a country with merits because everyone can see beyond their own self-interest. A piece of a people who only take care about themselves at the expense of others does not have merits. Hence, does not have fortunes in terms of karmic terms, good fortunes, full bao. And without food, good fortunes, what does it mean? You're born in a nation without less good fortune. What does it mean? Everyone's against each other. Everyone's trying to undercut one another, trying to cut, undercut the corners, trying to get the better of each other instead of thinking, you know, on behalf or about others, more considerate. So that is a country with less fortune, if you want to use the very basic terms. All right. So a nation, you want to be strong, want to be wealthy, want to be prosperous, must have merit. And merit, nation is made by people. And people must cultivate this kind of merit. In terms of laws and governance, it affects thousands, millions, millions, billions of people. This kind of thing must be taken with utmost care and uh, and sincerity. You need to really, really want to change things for better. Like I say, change is needed. Otherwise, there's no um, improvements. It will be corruptions and all that. But change must be done with such care and consideration of all aspects, all interest groups and everything. All the people who are involved, you know, and then they need to compromise. They need to broker a compromisation. That's what we have all these channels for. Official capacities and all that. Diplomats and all that. And this must be done with utmost care. If a person, if a government, if an entity, if a company, if a family, they change, well, company. If they change at the whim, you know, I, I, I don't like this. Let's just get rid of it. Like a... a, 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 a uh, in a political sense, the party group, they only care about their party goals instead of forgetting why they are found, their party was founded to serve the country, not themselves. If they, if, if they put party above the country, which is what happens in many, many, many places in the world, then they lost the whole point of having a nation. Why not build your own nations? Let me say, if you, even you build your own nation, you will split into another interest group. You will never get anything good in the wrong run. All you get is also this short-term incentive. So what I'm trying to say is, why is it destabilizing? Because everyone change at their whim. What kind of whim? They follow whatever is right in front of them only. They can't see beyond. They can't build. They can't compromise. They can't work together with one another, trying to build together. Even though different opinions, but they always put the country first. Otherwise, why would you be a leader? Why would you be elected at that place? Why would you sit on that tr- on the on the throne? Step down. 
if you can't see beyond that, step down. It's not a, it's not a rude thing. Step down, you have a better life. You can enjoy your own time at your wimp because you're not affecting anyone. But if your position is affecting many people, then don't. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be too polite on this one. There's no no politeness on this. So so right now, um, you know, and then it has to be go through pressure test. If you want to change the law, it needs to be tested carefully, one by one, province by province. It has to be a a proper report, a proper setups, and then in the the, the the law set up by the founding fathers or the founders of your nations or people who was before you, your ancestors and adding, there are reasons why they set it up. Some of them might be abolished because out of time, out of date. Rightfully so, if the culture and every consensus has changed, it's fine. But some of them are good, you know, like something that helps the people take care of their basic health, basic uh, needs that should be preserved, not being... Uh, done at the whim of a ideologies or a, a fever of certain ideologies. You should always see if it's the people eating well, living well, sleeping well. That's the basic of politics. If that thing is not taken care of, everything else must be cut. I'm being quite... One, why? Because if people are not eating well, sleeping well, just like the first part of it, how can this nation be good? How can this organization be good? How can this family be good? How can this marriage be good? How can you be good if you're not sleeping well, eating well, and mentally healthy and body healthy, right? So expand this outwards. Mm. So something, if it ain't broken, don't, don't fix it. <laughs> well, yeah, you can improve it, but if it ain't broken, don't fix it sometimes. Sometimes change can, can be quite disruptive to a level where it's sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not. So it's complicated. What I'm trying to say is use utmost sincerity, utmost care, utmost love into that uh, laws or whatever in your organization, company, or in your own group that you're trying to push forward. Make sure you have a clear ideas, make it make sense, actionable, practical, pragmatic. At the same time, room for improvement and growth. Right. Make sure you do it with that love and care not only with uh, your eyes on power and money and some favors to gain from others. That must be the basis, love and care. Without that, um, it will fall into this destabilization, fighting each other. All right, so I don't want to go too far. Um, let's talk about the queen. Come on. It's an elephant in the room. Why Why is she so respected? We're not talking about colonization. That's a different thing. We're talking about the queen herself, just a person. First thing, she is the opposite of these two words. And there's a reason why she's respected. Because she does not have that... I'm you! Like, sorry. <clears throat> she does not have that um, holy that thou, right? She's trying to change with the time, even though she's from the era, you know? But she, she changed with the time. She's trying to keep the relevance. And she, she always do her job uh, by, you know, fulfilling her constitutional arrangement, being a monarch who has no uh, involvement in politics, must be above politics, must represent an entity, a nation, a national as a whole, doesn't matter your view or anything. That means she stabilized the country. She represent a constant, that's why I, I like the word continuity. That's what we're trying to do with the Chinese traditional culture. That continuity is going to be killed off very soon if no one else is promoting it. That continuity is 5,000 years of continuity. For the queen, she represents continuity of 1,000 years of English history. And it reflects in everyone else as well. So looking at her, I also thinking of, of the continuity we need to have. It's not saying that it does not change. UK change. Australia change or the Commonwealth of Realm change, some become republic, doesn't mean that you cannot still respect the person or you, you won't be able to work with them. It's just different stances, doesn't matter. Just like ch children, when you were young, you were under care of your parents. And then when you grow up, doesn't mean that he's not your longer your parents just because you're independent. No, you're still able to have a relationship with them in a different dynamics. Same goes to uh, how leaders should uh, 
uh, treat others. So yeah, so the, exa the example of um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give is um, give cares and give understanding towards it and do it with utmost sense of duty, sense of love. You know, what makes you want to fulfill your duty? The love. Love for what? Love for, for the job you're doing? Love for, well, love for the people? You know, without that, how can you have that sense of duty? Right? Just like a parent who does not love their children or a, a, a husband and wife who doesn't love each other. What's the point of them having that? Right? The whole point is to build up a mature sense of um, um, responsibility to one another. Uh, and in, in Buddhism, we call it compassion. Uh, that compassion drives them to go through a lot of trials. Um, Master Ching Kong, without mentioning it, uh, without say, uh, much needed to be said, all these years, same thing, until the very last breath, he served, he served the people. In this case, not just one nation. In a sense, isn't it? Dharma King. Uh, in Confucius, he's called it the Wen Xuan Wang, the king of the wood. No, 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 I shouldn't say that. The king of culture, in a sense, cultural king. Yes, Wen Xuan Wang. So he, he's the one who goes beyond. He represents the continuity for all dynasties, no matter how much they're killing each other off, just to get that throne. No king other than Cixi. <laughs> which is the last one, can spit in the face of Confucius. Every king has to bow before Confucius. Every king. If you want to rule China, you better, better be bowing to Confucius. Why? Because he represents the soul, like, like the queen for the UK. He represents the continuity of a culture. doesn't matter what politics you are. If you want to tr properly call a Chinese in the ancient Chinese sense, the, the Zhong, like in the Sijing, the Zhongguo, uh, not the politic Zhongguo. In the actual Chinese culture, you need to learn Confucianism. You need to understand what it means. Feel the piety, and love and respect. So that's the continuity. That brings a sense of perspective of your place in the society. And hence, you, when you become a leader, you have thousands of years of history behind you. And that history, that is, that is the weight. Weight gives meaning to every step you go. You don't float and fluctuate any time. You, every, every steps are calculated and very careful. So I um, digress too far, but we're talking about leaders and what, how, how does a leader should be. And we have seen good examples from Her Majesty, from Confucius, from Master Ching Kong, from Buddha. Buddha is called Dharma King. Fo Wei Fa Wang Jun Chao Qin Shen. Buddha is the Dharma King who has surpassed all the sages. Why? Because he does not serve only one nation, one people, one race, one religion. He doesn't have that label. He serves all sentient beings. I, like, I repeat the same message. Why does people call you king? Why does people pray to you? Why does people bow to you? Just because you're all high and mighty? No. What makes you high and mighty? Right? What makes you worthy to be bowed, to be revered and respected? Right? Why don't I just respect anyone on the street? Why do I respect you? Why do you deserve this kind of respect? I'm not saying in a way of interrogative, but in a way of understand what karma brings to that level of reverence for this person, not the other. And then there's a phrase at, that brings, my, brings to my mind. Same word again. Yu zai qian ren tou ding guo, yao zai wan ren zu di xing. If you want to walk over the prostration of thousands of people. You need to walk under the feet of 10 times more of this amount. That means you need to serve 10,000 people in order to deserve a thousand worth people worth of respect. And, and it touches me when I hear the, one of the people, common people in UK. All right. What did he say? I'll line up for 22 hours. It's nothing compared to what Queen has done to us for 73 years. What's another day if she has served us for 73 years as our monarch, as our continuity, as our culture icon, a living culture icon? So she's, she said that. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It's like 23 hours of line is nothing compared to 73 years of her 
every day repeating the same routine, holding back her emotions, politic views, and all that, trying to present as a proper monarch uh, that hold upon his husband who loves freedom and all that, just to be behind his wife and not able to do what he wants. A much more man like him, able to do, willing to let go of that. So, that's another form of, see, it combines marriage, family, nations, lundi. Guys, this is a, a line of continuity, it's also a line of um, human relations. Right? That's why a lot of Buddha appears as king as well. And then let go of the kingship and become a a, a Dharma king, which is teaching Dharma to help liberate all sentient beings. So that's leaders in every single way, every single way. So I don't want to go too far. Um, we'll leave that for next one. Let's leave the last, because I'm late for 15 minutes. Hi, Maggie, welcome. Uh, we'll have this uh, com conversation for the rest of it. Do you guys are, um, open up? Let's open up. I'm with four. So let's have a discussion. We'll think about it for 30 seconds. Yeah. First thing, because we talk about today, um, we talk about one of the transgression is to be arrogant on, on the people that you were given in charge to take care of, to love, to protect. And also because of small group interest or because of your whim, at a whim, you change the law that affects the millions of people. Because of one person's whim affects millions of people, in a sense. Because of one little party interest affects millions of people. So there's no consultation with different interest groups. So this is what the second one, Liao Ran Guo Zhen, means. So now we want to go towards the discussion of today. First, we need to ask a question. How does one receive the mandate to become a leader of nation, organization? Including this organization like in, in, in the temple or organization in the, the politics, I mean, what's politics, right? The organization uh, of a nation, of a family, of a group, of a club. Is it because of what Chinese say, mandate of heaven? Yeah. What does mandate of heaven mean? Tian Ming. Or, uh, and then second question is, what's the first and foremost duty of a leader? You know, or a person in charge? So, them. So, that, that's also a question of, um, how do we know right from wrong? And how do we ensure that, like what, in the a, in a layer of a leader, of a group, or organization, of a company, of a team, what does right mean for them? So that's how you gauge what is right, yeah. in a sense, isn't it? Because there's so much people, like if you, the bigger you organize the government, the, the organization you govern over, the bigger divergence of views it will be. It will be a lot more wider cultural differences than anything. And to reconcile all that, to make a decision that we call right or it's it's not a small feat, isn't it? Like like you say, foresight. That kind of foresight comes with experience. How many people had that level of experience, that level of depth understanding? Without that's not realistic, isn't it? To expect a person to step up only a few years on that. Hence, that's mm -hmm. why you say discussion. You must discuss with the people who are affected by your policies, by every layers, you know, of the. Of, of the governance. It must be done by Guangxi Si, it must be done with uh, consultants and discussion properly before we are even able to draft something up that can mobilize the whole group, the whole uh, organization to move forward. The bigger it is, the more meticulous it has to be, something like that. Um, if it's just you and me, fine, it's fine. Like, as long as you're not harming anything. But if it's, a, if it's like millions of people, then it takes a, a time to, to build it up. Like, there's a saying that you can't please everyone. Someone's bound to be hurt every time you throw a rock. Yeah. It's, someone's going to get hit, but you still have to throw the rock if there's a job. 
So the thing, yeah, the thing is like consulting so much people, the bigger the organization that you govern over, the more, how to say, the more voices you will be hearing. Hence, you, the more ability, the wisdom is the key in here. Like, how do you have wisdom yeah. to the, the lessons from the past, the precedents, the, the people, what is to be taken, what is not to be taken? And also the part of um, the no, the voices of opposition, people who voice out why this is not good. It's also need to be taken. No one wants a yes man. Uh, let's bring an example of ancient China, right? Because like Tang Taizong, right? He has a Mr. Wei. All right. Uh, Zhao Wei, Wei, I forgot, Wei Zheng. Right? Mr. Uh, his minister Wei Zheng is, an enemy, is actually a former aide, AIDE. Of his uh, rivals, political rival, uh, Emperor Tang's rival, his own brother, <laughs> he he killed <laughs> in the Xuan woman. But aside from the bloody politics of medieval times, um, he has the heart, the big heart, to accept his political rivals' aid, political aid, into his own camp when he unified the, the country, stabilized the politics. And he always is. The person who keep saying no every time he has a policy trying to implement. This Mr. Wei is just saying, no, this is not right. And this guy has reasons. He's not he's not fool, right? He has a ground to opposite, to, to oppose him. Remember, that was a time of if you use the modern term, high authoritarian level, even more than modern modern authoritarian country, right? But he has the heart to open up and listen to the opposition, voice of opposition. Uh to the point where he's pissed and trying to say, I'm going to get rid of him or something like that. When his wife say, I really want to congratulate my Lord. What? And then the emperor was like, why? Because you have someone who's willing to go through this, you know, risk of getting head lopped off, just trying to give you some real opinion, you know, real world opinion. All right. Because when you are in the charge of something, you naturally have a sense of gravity. That means everyone tends tend to agree with you or something. Yes, man. And it's up to you as a leader to really find someone who's really willing to say no. And in that environment that you're in, and not in a little bubble. In Australia, we have something called Canberra's bubble. People who are stuck in the little, in the little government there, not knowing what's actually happening on the ground. That's a big no-no if you want to govern a nation. Uh, and it's very hard because you, it takes a lot of work and a little amount of uh, reward in a political sense. So that's why you need to have to ask yourself, why do you want to be a leader in the first place? Is it really fun? Do you guys agree? <laughs> oh, yeah. All that work, you know, over time, when when the people down are under you, they can clock on, clock in, clock off. Um, at, the, at the time where there were contracts specified, you have to stay over time clean up the mess, get things done. And then you still have to deal with other people, wider range of people outside, answer verbal to them in your own name. Why do you do this position, even though it's one of your subordinates' fault? But that's what makes a leader a leader. You know, their job is to bear the burdens. And that just, burden I, they should bear. Um, Maybe. That's right. I mean, that's hence. That's why we're saying that why people respect them, why do he got all that? perks it does not come cheap and if there's no if it's even better if there's a concept of karma in in there consequences using a modern term if there is a consequences understanding of consequences you know your mistake is not your mistake your mistake is the mistake of an entire nation think of a president of the united states mistakenly say a statement that i'm gonna attack you in a especially the most powerful country in the world. So I'm just going to uh, have a nuclear showdown with you in the middle of some places. What kind of effect it will bring, you know, or being provoked by one of the smaller countries with, you know, nuclears and all that. They have, as a big, as a big country with proper governance system and all that, they need to have the maturity not to be provoked easily to hold themselves back. The more powerful you are, the more, choices you have that means the lesson you need to act like a desperate cornered rat because you're not you have a lot of options in the world so i'm trying to say in, in this modern terms is that 
the more powerful you are, like Maggie said, the more temptation, the better, the easier it is for you to succumb into that. Enjoy instead of doing the hard work, the hard grit, the grind, trying to get through all the meetings, get through all the things. Obviously, don't lose yourself, have a compass, but you know it's very easy to to, to succumb to succumb to the um, you know the the perks of being a leader, you know, or the zhuan ji zai ni, or the um, you know private jet, or the um, high salaries that you can afford to buy a house and properties, and and then you know just slowly nudge to the darker side. Um, so that's why. Restrain and all that that cannot be done without proper foundation, and that foundation must be educated from young. That's not something you just become, unless you are Bodhisattva come again or Buddha come again. But that's even they also show you that they were educated from young. They won't just show you like that. Uh, they don't just fall from sky, all right? That's why, in the realistic sense, all the leaders, especially a good system, would have a leader training team, a team where they can, in kings, in monarchies, and all that, they have taizi, like Master Ching Kong always mentioned. There is a strong, you know, foundation training for the future kings, future queens, you know, ethics, how to be decent, how to be the mannerism, the outside mannerism, but. The right way should be the also the, the the character, the moral character, imbued by their own parents, and just be a decent human being first, and then build up layers and layers of training, because you are going to be a future king because that that system is quite set. Everyone knows that this will be a next leader. There's no need to argue about it. So they will already prep him up with the best, like best of the uh, best of the skills, you know, the skills of. Everything you know, the all kinds of skills you need to learn to be a best equipped to be a best leader. All kinds of uh, counsel, wise counsel, trusted by your parents, which is the king, and then grow up, groom up into one, eventually a good king, hopefully. But there are also cases where a lot of them coming from a house of generals or anything. In our modern terms, common people, normal people, and the rise to the top. That does not leave the foundation as well. It does not leave the foundation of uh, you know, the morality, the decency, human decency, the, the understanding of responsibility, the understanding of um, do right by your, your, your own people. And that, that, that also takes time to, to imbue. Um, so, yeah, it's not easy. So, hence the respect. Otherwise, no respect. They will, they will be toppled. Or they will be voted out in our modern terms. Uh, they will become irrelevant. Or like one of the examples I brought up, they will be spit on when they walk to the street instead of laid a flower. And for what we've seen in the news and all that, like Queen Elizabeth, she has done her job as a leader of a nation and many Commonwealth nations. A lot of them does not want to leave until the Queen is passed away. To give her, not just to give her face. It's because she is the symbol that bound. It's kind of like grandma in a house. It's not good to fenjia in front of grandma. You know, you don't you don't say I want to split up from the family in front of your great great grandma. So you 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 know you you enjoy her company and all that. And when she's gone, then you start thinking about it, including our country here. So that's why this shows a leader does not need to necessarily have power. All right, she has no real power. In a sense of you know, military or anything, she might be the head of armed force and all that. She's not wielding real power, or she respect the line that was drawn by his and her ancestor in 1600s, not to wield the real power. And 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 what did she gain? She gained love and respect from all a spectrum of politics, from all nations, most of them. Okay, um, so this is something we should learn. Also, you know, it doesn't have to be in power. Doesn't always necessary in power in that terms. Master Ching Kong as well. He does not govern any temple. He does not govern any Tao Chang. He say, "I do not care. I do not take uh, control of any administrations of any temples or any um, Dharma place. All this uh, pure land learning college learning center, uh, pure land um, organization that was uh, built in my name." He just like the queen. In my name, 
It's not governed by myself. They all govern themselves. Alright? What unites them is the common interest to propagate Buddhism. To learn and to go to Pure Land, actually. Yes. Pure Land Buddhism. And also to propagate Chinese culture. So that is what unites them. That's what brings him to that level. To that lay, lay level. And that's what he brings him to the UN. And where everyone, no matter what their religion is, willing to talk to him, willing to sit down, like in Singapore, willing to have, you know, have a, have a meal together as a different leaders of different religions. Uh, even though they never did that before Master Ching Kong arrived, or in a sense, like, I do not initiate contact with one another. So someone like this enigmatic person come in, give a very strong common ground understanding, you know, brings everyone together. So there you go. Wen Xuan Wang, Confucius. Uh, and then Buddha, Fa Wang, Lama King. Confucius is the king of culture, Chinese culture. All right. And then we have this, the queen, the monarch. All right. It represents the spirit of democracy of the Western world. Something like that. Okay. So thank you guys for the talk. Um, sorry for me dragging on a bit long, but um, yeah, I'm late for 15 minutes. So uh, I, I move on move forward 15 minutes. Uh, any feedback, guys? If no, then we'll continue with Amitov War. We'll finish it with Amitov. Okay? Yeah. Amitov War. Amitov War. Amitov War. Amitov War. Ah, me, po, fo. 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 May all the merits and virtues true. From this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this, aspire by the enlightened mind, be born together, then vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Amitabha. Thank you, everyone. May you be the best leader of your life, if anyone else but yourself. You know, if no one else, but you need to be a leader of your own mind. Yeah. <laughs>